Hello, welcome back. Welcome to my kitchen. Come in, sit down, and let me cook for you. I'm Tom, the Sunday Dinner Chef. Let's get started. I'd like to have the uh, chicken cordon bleu with the champagne cream sauce, if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, no salad, just the uh, cordon bleu would be fine. Well, welcome back to another episode of Forgotten 60s and 70s Foods. Today we're doing chicken cordon bleu. Now, this is was a classic early 60s. Actually, it hit the uh, United States around 1967 is when it was at its peak. It's actually from Switzerland, not from France. And I'll get into that a little bit later on. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to be changing up just one item on it. And I am going to be using pork rinds instead of breadcrumbs. To me, it seems to cook up a little bit better. Um, and, you'll, and you'll see why towards the end. Okay, let's get going here. Now I'm going to grind up a half a bag of pork rinds. Now I call it panko because it actually mimics panko breadcrumbs. Uh, this, to me, in my opinion, cooks up much better than regular breadcrumbs. You got to give it a try, okay? Um, it it really is good, especially on chicken. Now. I'm going to take this and it, the chicken is going to get pounded out. Now, these, I bought these already thin sliced chicken breast. Okay. Uh, usually there's five or six in, in the pack when I bought it. Now, I'm going to pound them out even further because I want this as thin as possible. So, easy for me to roll, plus it cooks up much faster. Okay. Um, this is going to be a two step process. It's going to get rolled with Swiss cheese. Now, I'm going to put in some honey ham. Roll it, okay, and then it's gonna get egg washed into the panko. I'm gonna put it into the freezer. Now, the reason why I'm putting it into the freezer is I want it to freeze in place. It'll help it stay. I don't have to use too many toothpicks. Worst thing in the world is have too many toothpicks and uh, I'm the guy usually who finds them the wrong way. Now, today I'm using thinly sliced uh, ham. It says honey ham on it. Um, in, in the past, what, what we used to do is we would take uh, a ham, okay? And we would take it and grind it up. I'm talking about a whole ham. And grind it up and uh, make it almost like uh, uh, chopped meat, almost like hamburger meat. And also mix the cheese in with it. And then bang the chicken out and put that in there. And you could you could... Uh, put it in with it with the uh, spatula and then roll it that way um, the way I fold this is I, I like to put the filling in fold one side into the other and then roll it that way and then stick it with a pen this way uh, stuff don't come out of it uh, it's easier to egg wash and also uh, to run through the panko but all right in my eyes it really doesn't matter okay if you see some cheese leaking out of it I think that's eye appealing to me anyway so um, just hang on and hope everything works out. Okay, by tucking in the sides here, it actually holds everything together. And as you can see at the end here, um, you can egg wash it, fill it in with, with the, the panko, and uh, nothing nothing should leak out. Like I said, now should. You know, like they say, uh, it's like riding a bike, you don't forget. Uh, I don't know when the last time I was on a bike. Okay, they're rolled up pretty nice. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna egg wash these, and then we are going to get this show on the road pretty self-explanatory two eggs whip it up okay uh, I'm going to um, put them in wash them up hit them with the panko I keep saying panko but it's pork rinds but I'm calling a panko so stick with me 
Uh, and then here, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get this thing going. Now, as you can see, I'm, I'm throwing a little uh, spoon action here at this stuff, putting it on, piling up high. Um, the, the pork rinds sometimes do have uh, a little problem sticking because they're oily, okay? Uh, you know, it's pig fat, <laughs> basically what it is. But the whole idea is uh, pack it on there as, as good as you can because it is the taste is going to be phenomenal. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. And also... Um, don't worry about getting every little nook and cranny because it's not going to matter. Uh, this is going to fry up fine. Put it in the oven. It's going to bake, finish up. Everything's going to be cooked to perfection. And you're going to enjoy this old, old 1967 dish. Been around since the 40s, by the way. Now, how this whole dish came about was from in 1940s in, in uh, Switzerland. Um, they were making schnitzel one day. Schnitzel is banged out either veal or chicken. Very thin, the same way here. Only uh, that's when they decided to put a little bit of ham in it, and also some Gruyere cheese was was the was the uh, choice of cheese. Here in America, it was Swiss cheese. Um, so it was from 1949 is when it was first discovered in a cookbook, and it became very popular here. Like I said before, 1967, uh, and it was the craze. I mean, between New York and California, uh, everywhere in between. Chicken cordon bleu was was where it's at. And then you know what? Now you can't find out where it's at. All right, there it is. It's out of the fry pan. And you can see some cheese oozed out of there, which is fine. It's not going to be a big deal. That's going to go into a 350 degree oven until the inside reaches a temperature of 165. Now, saucepan. I'm going to be making what is known back in the day it was a champagne cream sauce. They use champagne creams and this and that. This is going to be a white wine. I'm going to use Chardonnay and also uh, with butter, heavy cream, and this is going to cook up. But now here's the kicker. I'm going to add some cheese to it. I mean, it's going to be more or less of a cheese sauce, basically. Uh, I'm going to be using some um, Swiss cheese, some Parmesan cheese, and my, my go-to... Uh, Monterey Jack and some sharp cheddar cheese. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra butter in there. Now the wine gives it a nice flavor, you know, gives a little body to it. Um, I don't want this too thick, so I'm gonna thin it out a little bit. That's about maybe three or four slices of um, sliced Swiss cheese, okay? And I believe it's probably two big tablespoons of uh, Parmesan cheese. Also, I got a cup that's a half a cup, I believe, of Monterey Jack and sharp cheddar. I like that flavor to making a cheese sauce. It's got a great, great texture to it, great flavor. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some heavy cream into this. And then we're going to start blending in the cheese. Now, the heavy whipping cream, as you see right there, 40% butter fat. That is one of the top, top end uh, heavy creams. You can actually whip this with that much butter fat in there. You can actually make butter out of this, this whipped cream. That's why I like I like this. I, I guarantee it, it, the prices went up on it. This is not 1967 uh, cheese sauce anymore. <laughs> That's for sure. Reason why I'm doing this this uh, whole series on here, uh, I'm getting kind of nostalgic and, and a, lot of, a lot of good foods that fell by the wayside. I mean, too much fast food. I don't want to rag about this, but the, the whole idea is uh, I enjoy watching other people cook. I enjoy uh, a lot of a lot of YouTube channels. I became friends with a lot of, a lot of um, people, um, a lot of great barbecue channels and stuff. I'm going to keep this series going. Now, the last one I did with the shrimp, I had a lot of great suggestions down in the comments. If you have any more, please let them go. I might keep this going until uh, until we run out of uh, things to do from the 60s and 70s. By the time I run out of stuff. We'll be making stuff from the 2024 era. <laughs> anyway, okay, into the pot. Here is the key thing with making cheese sauce, okay? Uh, you want to get the temperature up 
so that the cheese melts, the butter and the heavy cream reincorporate, and then you just start stirring it until it slowly melts. See the sides are starting to bubble a little bit, okay? After a little bit, after a while, I keep saying a little bit, after a while we're going to shut that down, okay? And just let it gel together, let it melt all together, then turn it back up again, and it's, it's a process. You'll know if you goofed. <laughs> You'll smell it right away. Now, also into this, I'm going to be adding in some black, coarse black pepper, okay? Gives it a great flavor. Uh, and old old school ways was uh, everything was done with salt and pepper. Okay. Now, if you had some nutmeg, you can drop some nutmeg in here. Uh, I didn't want to get too crazy with it. I wanted to keep it as traditional as I could, other than not the champagne and not using breadcrumbs. But I tell you what, it's pretty damn close. So we are getting ready to put this onto the plate. I'm excited to taste it. Uh, I don't know why. I mean. I don't know what's going on with corporate America today as far as restaurants and stuff are concerned. This is a great meal. This is fantastic. You got to try it. Unbelievable. Hey, at this point, if you wouldn't mind, hit that like and subscribe button and uh, leave a comment. Please let me know exactly what you would like to see. And maybe I could pull it off. You never know. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we come. good so all right we're getting ready to sit down and eat this get a closer look here look at that mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. all right put this out oh look at miss charm Give this a little taste, a little morsel on top that came loose. Chin down, everybody. Hey, listen, thank you for watching. I am Tom from the Sunday Dinner Chef. Come on back next Sunday, and we're going to try something different for forgotten foods from the 60s and 70s. I appreciate all the new subscribers. Appreciate all the comments. I'm going to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And like I said, I will see you next Sunday.